money. Hey guys, how are we doing today? Hope you're all well. Yesterday was like tough, man. Yesterday was hard. I could not choose that top five. It was difficult. The levels, man, the levels keep going up and my judging skills keep staying the same. So <laughs> it's difficult. Um, but yeah, it was real fun, man. You guys nailed it. Just listening through them there. Like they all are like pretty worthy winners, to be honest. But yeah, shouts to Jake and Abe. I think the songwriting and the singing just took it to that, you know, that upper level. Um, I'm just going to check that all my cameras are working. I think I've got them all in, in a good spot now. Yeah, this one's staying on, which is great. Um, this one I just need to adjust so that those little logos go away. Just give me a second. There we go. Um, so what I thought we'd do today um, is build this logic template that you've all been wanting. Um, well, that you've all deservedly won. Um, 1,000 subscribers now. Well, it's actually more probably by now. Uh, what are we on? 1,040 subscribers, 1 1.3 million views, 20, nearly 25,000 followers. So yeah, all going real nice um everything going to plan um and so yeah you guys have rightfully rightfully earned yourself a logic template which i said i would do now i thought what would be good is if i a i don't have much time right now so building it kind of now just saves me a bunch of time but also um if i i feel like if i build it in front of you guys some ableton nerd which you all are probably will be able to kind of copy as we go along or at least watch it back and then maybe kind of do the the Ableton one for me because A, I don't think I'll do a very good job uh, at, at making an Ableton template. But I think, you know, maybe someone else will be able to copy it. Um, so if I make the logic one, you know, this video will stay up for a, however long it is, a month, and then hopefully someone will be able to recreate. Um, I'm going to use logic plugins only so that it works for everyone. Um, as we go along, if there is, you know, maybe a moment where I'm like, oh, I really wish I could use this plugin instead of a Logic one, maybe we'll do a little poll or something to see how many of you have actually got it. Because then, you know, maybe it's something like a Valhalla Reverb or H Delay. I don't know how many of you have these things. So, um, yeah, but either way, you know, effects and stuff like that can obviously be copied and changed. The main thing I want to give you guys with this is a good workflow. So that's the thing that will hopefully translate across because you know in terms of like drum samples and all that kind of thing i'm not going to be giving away samples with this template or anything it's, it's going to be you know ultra beat but the way that ultra beat will be um gain structured and rooted will be i think helpful for you guys uh in some way um so yeah you know even if uh you just end up having to look at this template looking around and not using it hopefully you'll learn something um, i mean you guys have seen me using it and it helps me work very quickly having this template um, ready to go. Um, it helps me make a dance music tune anyway, very quickly. So yeah, it's not going to be as massive as mine in terms of VSTs and, uh, you know, instruments. Um, it'll, but the bussing and the routing and the flexibility, um, and some of the chains as well, like the order of plugins that I want to give you guys is what works for me. Um, so yeah, Ableton doesn't have Rotocab. Yeah, there's, you know, an, immediately an issue, but it has chorus, right? It has vibrato. So maybe we'll, we'll use like a vibrato type plugin. It's basically the same thing. Um, so yeah, um, GarageBand gang. I don't think this would work on GarageBand. I don't know if you can open logic templates in GarageBand. Maybe you can, because they are like kind of, you know, brother and sister softwares. Um, yeah, Jamie A, if, if someone wants to make a Fruity Loops one as well, as we go, that would be dope. Um, yeah, it'd be really dope. So let's see how we go. Um, but yeah, also, I think it's a good day to do it because um, we don't have front page this week on, on Twitch, um, which is why the numbers are a bit lower because Xbox and PlayStation are launching like a huge thing or something. And um, my guy at Twitch told me that they have bought like 99% of the front page coverage for the whole week so like yeah we're basically just down to like you guys the core fans like you know the people who are here every week which is nice you know it's nice to have a little bit more of a core crew 
stream and I thought what a better time to you know I'll save my creative juices for another day and we'll just get this template going um so yeah still nearly a thousand people in here I suppose so that's cool but uh yeah if we if the numbers go up dramatically and whatever and we end up on the front page somehow then uh yeah maybe I'll um make something but I think template and then we're doing the holding on breakdown at the end anyway so um yeah let's see how we go um it should be fun let me uh mute what the hell this is wow this song is, apparently is called pussy crack so definitely gonna pause that one there <laughs> um so yeah i'm just gonna have a little sip of water and then we'll get into it <clears throat> yeah it really was called that crazy got my fresh bag of ruffles we good to go oh yeah I need a haircut so bad, man. It's getting so bulky. Look at this. Mab. I did not party last night. <laughs> I just ate food and watched some bullshit TV with Emily. It was good fun. Hair's looking good. Let it grow. All right. All right, grow. <laughs> Oh, also, I haven't got around to um, giving you guys the prizes yet from um, yesterday. So, um, yeah, we'll do it today. Pringles are awesome. No beer today. Get a man bun. No. Come on, man. Jesus. You crazy. Christmas album dropping. Yeah, no plans for that yet. No plans. But that would be, what would that even sound like? <laughs> We wish you were merry never. <laughs> just like, just put bells on everything, right? That'll be it. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Here we have a completely empty, brand new logic template, as it is when you open it. Um, so yeah, this is how it kind of begins. So um, try and think best way to do Hi. this. Best order. Order. Uh, best order is going to be... So yeah, for, for those just tuning in, I'm using an Apollo twin. So I've got uh, two inputs and, uh, well, kind of four outputs, but six outputs. Um, so I'm going to assume that you guys have just got two inputs two outputs um so you know i'm not going to do any crazy routing in terms of like sending different buses out as if you were using a little desk like i am um someone says will there be an ableton one too i'm hoping someone's going to make one as we go along so we'll see um but i'm going to make the logic one and we'll do it together so if you've got questions as we go through i just think this will be more productive you know if i made it in my spare time and then just pressed upload you guys would probably have a bunch of questions so if we do it this way maybe it'll be a little slower but i think you guys will get more out of it so we'll do it that way um so yeah this is logic uh what version of logic I'm on here 5.1 so this is the version that's got like live loops and stuff built in you know all this stuff which i like never use um but i probably should um but I'm not going to do anything really for live loops. It's just going to be based around this and really the mixing desk and the routing. Um, so yeah, let's go. So the first thing I like to do um, is well, set my BPM at 125. That's my kind of go-to get things rolling speed. And um, at the top, I have a sidechain set up straight away. I don't know if sidechain is one word or two words. <laughs> I'm going with two words. Um, and I like to go for a kind of blue. On that one and uh what this is going to do what can i give that a little picture metronome and the instrument i use for that you can find in uh i think it's in utilities and it's called klopfgeist <laughs> weird thing uh, and what klopfgeist is is um basically a little sine wave beep generator you've got So what I do is just literally have it like a beep. Um, and I use C3 and I'll just make it really beepy like that. Put it in mono. 
and then I'll just draw in a little and then you know that's just your kind of go to four four on the beat side chain set up for well whenever you need it um I pretty much like to you know if you're making house music just having a four four side chain click send set up is great the reason I do that instead of using the kick drum is it gives me more control oh Klopfgeist is German for metronome there you go makes sense um yeah it gives me more control because you know sometimes maybe you've got a long mm, 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 kick and if you've you're sending that to a pad well then you're going to have the pad going the the instead of you know so if you just use a little beep then you can use the release on your sidechain compressor to control how much sidechain you want um you know if if you're using plugins to do your sidechaining like pumper or whatever they're called then this isn't gonna you know make much difference for you but for me um it really works and i just have that at the top ready to go at all times um a four bar little beep um and the important thing about that is I'm going to send it to bus one and then I'm going to put it on, um, I'm going to mute bus one. So I'll call bus one side chain bus. Um, okay. So you can see it coming through. All right. And then we're just going to mute, mute that bus. Um, and that's all you really need to, to do with that. Um, I actually, instead of, you know what, actually, instead of sending it to bus, I like to do no output just in case. And then I, I actually send it like a bus bus like that. Um, and then you can put it on pre-fader, pull that down, and you can see that like, it's still sending no matter the fader position. And then you can mute that. And basically the moral of the story is you don't need any audio from this, like at all. You just need the signal to be being sent. So even with this bus, you can have no output. So look, you're not hearing it. It's not doing anything except there is signal going from here to this bus. And what that means is, um, you know, anytime um, it's on pre-fader, right? Yeah, pre-fader. Anytime I pull up a synth, let's just imagine, I don't know, this synth. Let's just put that in. yeah there's some cheesy chords for you um quantized it badly um so yeah you know now if i go and just put a compressor on it and i always use the logic compressor for side chaining up here where it says side chain bus side chain and that trigger is going to start triggering away um, I like to use, uh, which compressor do I use for side chaining? I think just the normal. But the reason for that is it has the straightest line. So it's the smoothest, most linear type of compressor. Um, I put the attack on super fast. Put this all here. Oh, actually, I mean, I have a preset for side chain. Bang, there you go. Um, see it? And then all you need to do is tweak your release. And then you've got whatever amount of side chain you want. Make it really powerful. So there you go. That's like a nice easy thing to just have at the top there. Um, it, it helps me endlessly save time. So let's get rid of these. Don't need any of that. Um, cool. So there's our initial sidechain. I have a universal audio sidechain set up as well as a separate thing, but I'm not going to do that for you guys. You can decide whether or not you need that, but that's the most important thing is remember, you've always got your sidechain on bus one when you're using my template. All right, cool. Let's go down now. Uh, next up, I like to, um, to go for drums. Um, and for that, we are going to use, well, we've got a choice. We could use drum kit designer which I don't really use much, um, but I think we're going to use good old ultra beat um, because that's kind of how I learned. Um, you know, there's a choice. Maybe we can have both actually within the same bus, but as a guide, I think ultra beat is most similar to battery. So we'll go with, we'll go with that. Um, 
And then that is going to go to, um, actually, wait, no, I need to set up a couple other things first. I need to set up my other buses. So let's just make an audio track. Bus two, I always use for a, like a general reverb. So I'll just call that reverb. I like that one to just be there for safety. If I'm tracking a vocal, if I just quickly want to send a clap to reverb, bang, I'll just, you know, have it on bus two. Uh, and for that, I usually um, have a Valhalla or um, an EMT 140 plate. Um, but today we'll do a space designer or we could do chroma verb, verb actually. That's with the latest, uh, oh, it should be a stereo bus, mind you. Uh, that's, that comes with the latest logic. So let's, let's do that. Um, I'm going to send this click there so I can just sort of hear the reverb popping away. Pre-fader. All right, we want it longer than that. Full wet, not dry, and maybe two seconds. That seems cool. Uh, I might come back and change it um, in a bit. 20 seconds on pre-delay. So yeah, there's your kind of easy go-to emergency reverb on bus two. Bus three, I like for um, chorus, the as in chorus, the effect. Chorus FX, let's call that. Um, and that I, do I have a preset for that? Nah. It's all good. So that needs to be a stereo bus again. Modulation. Chorus. Um, I think that's probably how I have it because it's set to use the default. So yeah, 100% wet because we're on a bus here. We don't want any of the dry signal coming through. Um, and then uh, I like to put an EQ uh, after that of just taking out the bass. Like not, you don't need any bass really, like what well, sub in your chorus. So I'll just roll that off gently down there um maybe i'll put like a slightly different chorus effect here as well bypass so you guys can experiment I, I bet a lot of you have probably got that right so i don't know how that sounds but you know there's an option to have that there so i'm just going to bypass that so you've got it to like maybe play with if you fancy it um cool and then next up i i usually have rotocab um, which is a logic only thing, like a, a roto cabinet, like something you put an organ through. Um, but this can be, you know, really anything, um, that's just more modulation. I mean, it's up to you. Um, so I'll just call this like mod effects bus, you know, throw whatever you want on there, man. There's a ton that come with logic. You know, you've got your roto cab. Um, I can't remember if that's my go-to setting but the important thing i remember is i always have it on fast down here so put that on fast and then you can kind of tweak you know how fast you want that thing thing to spin that's going to give you like really crazy almost phasey type effects and that's going to give you more of a vibrato effect so i'd go with that um but you know you could have whatever there's a good one scanner vibrato is, is similar to that it, it's just you know like a kind of tremolo effect but it can be 360 as well and it just sounds cool you can have two sides you know modulating at different speeds um so i'll bypass that but you can kind of play with that one um it's great for sending synths to or vocal to just make it sound a bit weird um what else might you want on that I don't know. That's that's probably it. That gives you an idea of what I use it for, anyway. Uh, and again, you can you can just cut the cut the bass on that. You don't need any bass really on your roto cab or the way I'm using it, anyway. No sub. Um, cool. So we're starting to build here. Um, you can see our buses down here. I'm going to color the side chain bus um, a bit like yeah. I don't know. What do we want? Maybe something like that. Um, yellow is the default color for buses in Logic, so I'll leave that uh, as yellow. <clears throat> um, okay, cool. Um, right, now we need to think about um, instruments. Uh, I like to leave bus five, six, seven, eight, nine, kind of, I think I leave them clear. Maybe? I can't remember now. Um, but I, I always have bus 10 as my drum bus. Um, 10 is my lucky number. 
I don't know why, but it just is. So um, there's 10 there that's popped up. So we'll call that drum bus. Oops. Um, okay, great. And then now we can delete that. Um, and now we can make a drum track. So software instrument, ultra beat, and we'll output that to the drum bus. Uh, now, importantly, let me actually let me just check the chat. You guys got any questions? Um, if you're an Ableton user, this is going to be a lot like um, using what, what do you guys call it? Um, drum drum track, is it or drum stack or something? Or I don't remember. <laughs> Return tracks? Is it drum rack? Drum rack? Yeah, this is what that's going to be like. Basically, having one plugin, one ultra beat, so you can play a lot of different sounds on one keyboard or, you know, controller, and then still send them out of multiple different channels for mixing and collapse it, you know, within the arrange window. So that's what this is going to be like, basically. Um, so I'm using ultra beat, but you know, you can use battery, you can use whatever. I use battery, but today we're, we're using this. Honestly, drum rack is wax, says three calves. Okay, well, let's see if we can improve in some way. <laughs> um, so we'll call this ultra beat kit. And we're going to bus 10 already. So now what you do, I'm going to right click and do create track stack and a summing folder. And what, what that's going to do is basically just put the bus on the arrange window here. So and now you've got your little collapsible thing. And what it means is any, you know, now any audio or MIDI track that I drag into this folder here, is always going to send to bus 10, um, which is what I want. I want all my drum sounds going to bus 10, nice and easy. I've got all my percussion, drums, whatever, on one fader then before we go out. So gives you some control. Um, I like to color that one like a light blue, I think it is. That's where we're at. Yeah, let's go with that blue. Cool. Um, yeah, I didn't do any delay effects on the on here yeah i forgot about those um let's let's do um a, a ping pong delay i forgot about that my number five we'll do a um delay effects let's go with a i mean logic stereo delay is great um so i've got it on 100 percent wet because we're on the output track. I don't love to delay any bass really, especially for a kind of bus delay. Usually when you send to a bus delay, it's because you want to like create some space. So you want it to be upper frequencies. I'm just going to roll off the highs a little bit. Um, and now I want to get these kind of ping ponging. Let's see if I can just send something. Ah, I've got nothing loaded in Ultra Beat. That's why it's doing that. So this is a blank Ultra Beat um, at the moment. So I'm just going to load up a... Oh, here we go. I've got a couple. So disclosure blank. Yeah, that's everything just blank. No samples at all. Maybe we may come back to that. Uh, what's generic 808? Okay, well, that'll do for now. I'm just going to send to some delay. Now I'm going to offset this just to make that nice little stereo effect happen. So we're doing eighth note delay. Cool. I think that's going to be useful. Uh, and then I might put like perhaps a little reverb as well after the delay so that the, the, the delay is kind of set back in the mix. So we'll do a little half the dry signal. That's kind of cool. Now, of course, you don't need to have that plug in there. You could actually send the re the delay to the reverb bus. So you've got like a through kind of loop going there, that would be fine, but I'm going to leave that on there just in case you prefer it. It does make a difference. Hear that? You know? So I'll leave that there. So that can be delay, uh, we'll call that like eighth note delay so you know what it is. 
cool. There's a delay. Feel free to add, you know, quarter notes, whatever you want. That's bus five. You know, you could you could easily have like six quarter notes, seventh half notes. Then you still got some spares here. I don't know. Um, but yeah, from from kind of 10 upwards, I like to keep it instruments. That's how I keep my brain organized. I know that 10 is drums, 11 is bass, 13 is synths, 14, 15 upwards is vocals. So that's where we're headed. Um, all right, let's go back to ultra beat. Now I, I'm going to, maybe I'll upload this as, as blank, but I'll have all the routing in place. Um, cause then you, you guys can drag your own samples in. I don't know. What, what would you prefer? Do you want me to load up like just a kit? I don't know what the grimy 909 was. Maybe the 909 is easiest. So we've got, and then, you know, you can change stuff. I think we'll, we'll use this. So this is just, yeah, grimy 909 that comes with, with, uh, ultra beat. What, what's this one? Yeah. There's things I don't like about this, but whatever. All that matters really is the routing. Um, I think we'll use grimy 909. This sounds more fun. <laughs> cool. So here's how we're going to do it. Got the kit loaded up. And at the moment, every sound on that drum kit is going down bus 10 and down one output. See? No matter what sound I press, it's all just going down that one channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to make like 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, oh, actually, no. We're going to make a little bit less than that because that on ultra beat you only get 16 channels um so eight eight stereo channels eight is plenty eight is plenty um and so what that now means that you need to i need to do is change all these to bus 10 so now all of these channels are going down bus 10 and turn them down a bit uh if i rename one does it do them all i hope so Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We actually need different names. So we'll do ultra beat kick, ultra beat snare, ultra beat um, clap, ultra beat hi-hats. I do like hi-hat closed, you know, so hat closed because I quite like a closed and open separation. Hat open. Um, toms, I guess. Ultra beat toms. And then ultra beat ride slash symbols. Cool. That's plenty. And look, you can keep adding. They'll just be mono after that, which is, you know, still fine for drums. So there's more if you need it. But that should uh, get you going. So now we need to open ultra beat and get our routing sorted. So. Kick drum, that's fine. We want you going down number one. Um, it's pretty short. Let's see if I can... Yeah, whatever. This is your attack and decay in here. Ah, oh, it's on sustain, that's why. Yeah, I'm not loving the top end on that, but uh, whatever. This is not like a final mix vibe. It's just to get you going. That's better. So you've got some effects in here. You've got EQ. You've got you've got some ways of manipulating the sound. You've got a noise generator, which is quite fun. It's actually quite nice. I like that noise on the kick. Cool. That's the kick done. All right. Now we got some horrible snare drums, but I'm sure you guys will pick better samples than this. So now we need to send those. See all these different groups here. These are your outputs. Snare, group two, snare, group two. Now you look at your mixer. Kick drums coming down one and two. These ones are coming down three and four. So now you've got the ability to put plugins on your kick and different plugins on your snare. 
Simple as that. All within one plugin. So I can still play it as, you know, an instrument. You know? Hi-hat. Hi-hat uh, closed. What did we decide that was going to be? Hi-hat closed was 9 and 10. Boom. 9 and 10. Pedal hi-hat. 9 and 10. Open hi-hat will be 11, 12. So you see it now? And this was, you know, kind of the best thing about having an 808 or a real 909 and a real 808 back in the day was that you had multiple outputs on the back of the machine. And so you could send different drums to different channels on your desk and manipulate each sound, you know. Sometimes it's fine to just go out of one and two. And, you know, then you've got the whole mix down one bus and you can just crunch away at that. But if you want that separation, which I do always, you can you can do that. And so that's the really good thing about these subgroups. And this is in battery as well. This is in, you know, drum machine designer, like I showed you earlier. So, yeah, I'll do it in Ultrabeat. And then you guys can clearly just copy these over and, you know, the routing will be the same. Um, clap. Clap needs to be... Was it five and six? No, seven and eight. Toms were 13, 14. Oh, wait, did I just screw that up? No. 13, 14. These are not 909 Toms, but whatever. So, you know, you can pan these. That's another kick. I don't think we need that. That's horrible. Another clap. I don't know. It, I, to be honest, I would just ignore everything above here. I would never have these in place. So I'm going to turn those down because, uh, yeah, that's just... You can load your own samples in there. These are the ones that matter. Ride. Ride was the last one. What's that? 15, 16. And so was Crash. I would probably separate those out actually, but whatever. Ride pan to the right a bit. Crash can go to the left. That's it. That's uh, a 909 kit rooted the way that I personally like it. Kick drum one and two. Snares three and four. Toms all the way up there, out the way. Close hi-hats there, open hi-hats there, clap there, ride and cymbals on top. Cool. Now you got to get the gain structure right. So I'll just play in like a quick beat and make sure we're getting the gains correct. Uh, also, yeah, I should probably um, change the... So I like my default quantize so basically whenever you play in midi on logic it default quantizes if you want it to so up here when you have a region selected this area here is affecting that region but when you have nothing selected it just basically this controls whatever you you're about to play in so i like to put this on 16th notes um just so it gets it right straight away but you know if you're looking for some swing you've got 16th swing here so before you start making anything if you have an idea you want to go straight or swung adjust that up here um I think let, let's do straight just so it's nice and simple. So yeah, now when I play in this, it's gonna it's gonna quantize it to six themes, hopefully. There you go. Oh uh, yeah, should we want that? Cool, let's just leave that.
Oh, we forgot the, uh, there should be a, a rim, like a good, a 909 rim. There it is. That needs to go down its own channel as well. I didn't really leave one for that. I'll put it down the clap channel. Clap slash rim. You guys can change that if you want, but yeah, a 909 rim is pretty important. <laughs> it's like one of the best sounds that it has. This is a shit version of a 909 rim, but it'll do us for now. I mean, this beat doesn't really matter. I'm just making it so that we've got all the sounds, you know, going through there. So yeah, we're coming in way too hot. So we need to adjust that. Oh, wait, I've done this wrong. I didn't realize that. What if I... Okay, yeah, that we've got space for a rim. My bad. We can do the rim here. I did two kicks. Yeah, that's better. I thought I ran out of inputs quickly. I was like, what the hell? Cool. Rim can go there. Yeah, now the snares can go five and six. Cool. My bad. Cool. We need to put a little snare in this beat, so let's just make it a little longer. Cool, really cheesy beat, but it doesn't matter. All we're looking for is to get the gain structure right. So, uh, the kick drum. Kick drum's coming in hot. You, you know, you could you could turn that down on the fader, but for me, I like to kind of do it more internally and make sure everything's at the right volume here. So let's back that off. Where are we peaking there? Minus, yeah, you want to be peaking around minus nine or 10 for the kick, I think. That looks about right for the rim. Pretty loud on the snares, so let's back those down. Oh, you can't multiple select, can you? You can do it here. Clap, I think, should be almost as loud as the snare, so that looks good. Hats are a bit loud. Back those down. So I've got the master up a bit here because it's just basically feeding into Twitch louder. It's a bit too quiet there, so ignore these numbers here. It's not it's it's not gonna be that loud. Cool, that's a pretty good gain structure. Um so you know the advantage of this is now, you know, whenever you swap a sample, you know, in or out of whatever sampler you're using, in this case, Ultra Beat, it's going to go to the right channel and it's going to be at the right gain. You know, you, you can just throw stuff at it and it's not going to go, whoa, that's way too loud or where did where'd it go? I, I don't know where it should be. So the idea is you guys should get used to working in this order. You know, know that your kick is one and two. Know that your snares are three and four. Uh, or sorry, rim is three and four. Just whatever, you know, rearrange it how you like it and then stick with that. And then you'll learn, like, that's where everything's going. Um yeah, you can just drag and drop samples into Ultra Beat into this window here. You can press it and just, you can search, show within Finder. You know, there's, this is where these ones are coming from. You can just browse. Uh, or yeah, you can just, you can just drag and drop like that. See? So easy. Um, nothing wrong with Ultra Beat. I used Ultra Beat for the whole of Settle and it was great. Um, some stock sounds, mostly not 
stock sounds. Uh, that I think that's what it's weakest at is, stock, is the stock sounds. But you can even make your own kick drums in here. You've got the ability up here. You know, there's a there's a, a synth um, oscillator up here. Let me uh, switch to sound playing this kick here. You know, turn off the sample. It's just silence now. If I turn this on, um, you've got a sine wave, which you know you can control um, and mess with the envelope here and, and you can make a pretty good kick drum. Um, I'll try one quickly. I've spent a long time since I used this. So route that to envelope one. You can hear it start to begin. So that's more of like an 808 style kick. It's a Pharrell shit. So I've got it on sustain at the moment. I want to turn that off. So you get it. Look, there's. it's kind of like a, you know, the. it's like Big Kick, like that plugin I use, or Logic Synth, you know. You can make a kick up there. Um, so there you go. There's there's one I've just made for you. Um, I'll leave that one there. Um, can we name these? How do you name them? Yeah, there you go. Um, guy, big kick, style. <laughs> oh, you can't do it. Guy, big kick. There you go. That'll give you the chance to, if you want, you know, have a play with this. You can make some pretty gnarly kicks with it, man. And you've got so. Envelope one is this, that's the, you know, where it's being rooted to in terms of modulation. So mess with that. And then number four is doing the length. So, you know, 200's like a 909 kind of thing. Yeah, I made a lot of kicks like this for, for Settle. It was great. That to me sounds, you know, like a solid kick. There you go. That is, and that's going to bus one as well. So it's going to the correct routing and everything. Um, so I'll leave these ones all blank and you guys can throw stuff at that. Wicked. There's your gain structure. Now, next step is the drum bus is going straight out as you can see here, it's going straight to the master out. Nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine. If that's what you want to do, cool. But as you, some of you probably know, um, I like to send my bus instruments. So let's say drum bus, bass bus, synth bus. You know, you've already got some degree of separation there. You can send those to the master out if you want. I like to take it back another two levels for extra control. And what I mean by that is, I'll send all the instruments to one channel. I'll send all the vocals to one channel. Just so at the end of the mix, if I need to boost the vocals or boost the instruments or whatever, or EQ something as a group, I've got all the music on one fader and all the vocals on another one. Makes it easy. So that's what we'll do now. We're going to send the drum bus um, to, I'll do it to 20 for you guys, bus 20. Um, and here it is, bus 20. And we'll call that all instra. So all instruments are going to end up there. Um, I'll put this in big mode today so you guys can really see. Um, that's going to be, we'll color that. What color do I have? I think I have that uh, green. No, I have my effects bus green. Can't remember now. Yours is going to be green. <laughs> okay. Um, and then that is now going to the stereo out. So as you can see here, this drum beat now is going through this bus. If I mute that bus, you know, the music is still sending here, but it's being paused and it's not it's not making it to the master out. And I'm also, you know, I'm going to do the same for everything. So my drum bus is sending to bus 20. I'm going to do the same for the bass. I'm going to do the same for the synths, everything. Um, so that just gives you, you know, the ability to ride all of your music on one fader, which is useful. And, you know, it, you can even... You could do some crazy effects on it then if you wanted as well. You know, you could drag in like, uh, I don't know, 
uh, what's it called? Remix effects, I think it's called. I can't see it at the moment. Oh, it's probably in effects. Duh. Remix effects. Look. So, you know, you could do all of that to your entire music before it even reaches the master out. And then you still got the ability to run that through whatever you like. So I'm just giving you guys levels of control. That's what we're going for. Um, yeah, like a VCA fader. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I don't know how you're doing this in Ableton, but there is just think about everywhere your signal is flowing and where your buses end up. Um, yeah, VCAs can't have inserts. That's that's the difference. So it's better than a VCA, I would say, because you've got the ability to add plugins at every stage. Um, the only VCA really here is this master fader, which is just controlling the level of logic that sends to Twitch. Um, groups in audio, yeah, they called, I think, Ableton groups. There you go. So in, in logic, they're called track stacks. So this is a track stack here. We've got one drum kit in it. But we can load up a bunch. So let's, I don't know, let's load in something else. Um, instead of Ultra Beat, let's, um, where's Logic? Down the bottom, I can't see. Let's load in Drum Synth. Here's Drum Synth. Let's make that a different blue. And uh, what's it doing? Kicks. I don't know. Let's do. Um, shaker. We'll do a shaker. Um, you guys can mess with this. You know, there's there's shaker for you, but that can be whatever you want. I'm just doing it as an example that, you know, this is where you add more drums and look, just by immediately having them in this stack, in this, you know, tower thing, it's going to route to bus 10. So I don't have to worry about fixing any of that. It's already going to 10, which means I know where everything's going and it's all ending up at instruments, you know. So there you go. I'm, I'm not going to leave that because it's stupid, but that's that's basically all you, all you need to know. That's where you're going to have your drums. And it's nice and neat because me personally, I like having multiple drums on one keyboard. And that's what this gives you, you know? You don't have to have a kick, a snare, a whatever, a whatever, a whatever, a whatever. And, you know, and then you end up with all of these MIDI regions spread out like this just for one instrument. I personally don't like that. You know, some people do because you can name each of these a different thing. You know, fine, do that if you want. Um, but for me, I like to be able to play, you know, a drum kit like a drummer. So I need it all in one on one sound. And you can do that by selecting the drum bus. And then when you play, like whatever is in the drum bus here, it will play anything on that given note. Um, so, you know, you can do that. You, you could do that if you wanted. You could have kick, you know, you could have kick, snare, tom, hi-hat, whatever. But within, you know, each of these ultra beats, you would have to make sure that you're on the right note. So, that you know, it's another way of doing it if you like to see all of your MIDI spread out a bit more. Um, but yeah, this is just how I like to do it. So I'm going to get rid of all that. We'll call that ultra beat 909 test. And I'll leave that beat in there for you guys so you can see it all flowing the way that we like it. Um, I'll also put some plugins on here for you. So I love a bit of overdrive on my kick. Logic overdrive is great. That's how I have it saved as. Um, here's the difference. Thumping. <laughs> so yeah, we'll just do a, a little... You can hear the difference already. Just distorting it a little bit. Um, and then I would just have like an EQ ready to go on that blank open. So that's good. Um, you might want to send some reverb from that rim. So, oh, not side chain. So I'll leave that ready to go. So 
So there's some reverb there. It's quite a boomy reverb, that, actually. Um, chroma verb. We can put some EQ after the reverb. more usable reverb uh, the clap for me I like to compress my claps really hard um, and I like to use the VCA which is a stock logic compressor uh, based on the DBX 160 I believe yeah let's hear that before and after so much more punch probably a bit too much Add some distortion. Nice. So now I know, you know, any clap I run through this is going to get compressed straight away. That's nice and easy. Whack an EQ on there as well. Blank, because you never know what you're going to choose. But it's just, you know, it's just useful having this stuff there when you open Logic. It's very toppy, this reverb. Might have to change it. Same with the, these are already super compressed samples, but you know, I would, I would still put EQs across everything just in case. Just time saving, you know. Money. I'll put some compressors on these as well, but I'm going to bypass them because they don't need to happen. Yeah, again, see, even when you just open your project and you have bypassed stuff, like, you know, it's just useful. It just saves you time. That's what it's all about, man. Keeping the creative juices flowing, not getting stuck on boring admin shit, you know? Um, so there you go. Yeah, I'm not sending any kick drum to the reverb, but you totally could. Send whatever you want. So there we go. Uh, we're still coming in a little hot into this bus, so back these down a bit. Cool, there we go. Um, so now you get onto your drum bus. Um, as you guys know, I like to go into tape and all these other things. Uh, Logic has tape to a certain extent. You can kind of do some like tape distortion within the, uh, like within the tape delay, um, like using this stuff here. Um, but it's not really... It's not really like the best way of doing distortion within Logic. Like it just doesn't have a tape delay plugin, basically. So I'll just do you some normal distortion. Then you can, you know, replace for your favorite, your favorite plugin, whatever you want. Uh, first up, though, we compress. Um, so I'll use the Logic compressor again. I would probably go for this compressor. This is based on an SSL style compressor. So, you know, I love my drums going for an SSL G bus. Uh, the G bus compressor, I usually have it set on 10 milliseconds attack. Uh, usually a faster release than this one even goes. So we're going fastest release possible. No makeup gain, um, no distortion, no limiting. Uh, let's just, oh yeah, two to one ratio. Let's have a listen. So we're compressing like insane amounts there. So there it is, uh, before and after, I'll keep bypassing. I think we might need a slightly faster, uh, slower release on this plugin. So there you go, it's taken away a fair bit of, of gain there, five or so dB. But, you know, like, it's just an example. Um, I, yeah, this I'm basically trying to emulate the Ableton glue compressor. This is basically it. This is based on an SSL. You know, you can just tell by the knobs. 
It's based on an SSL compressor. So yeah, use your favorite G-Bus style SSL compressor. The Ableton glue will be perfect. Uh, Logic just doesn't, I don't believe, has um, a compressor set up for that. Um, no, nah. it has like vintage EQs. It's got some nice um, like Neve. Look, it's got, it's got uh, you know, there's a Neve EQ. So we'll put some of those on in a bit. It's got... Um, tube you know pull tech pull tech eq so those are all we'll get to those in a bit um but yeah no compressors uh they just have these different styles up here all built within the same one so this is logic's own one i guess I, or maybe it's based on a tube tech i don't really know um i think it looks most like a tube tech doesn't it that looks like i don't know what that is focus right or something that's definitely an 1176 that's a dbx 160 that's an ssl Oh, that might be a, uh, an 1176 actually as well. <laughs> I mean, they're both FET. They're both FET compressors. So, you know, that makes sense. And that's got to be an LA-2A, an Opto. Um, so, yeah. But for drums, you know, SSL. So I'm going with that. But yeah, use your Ableton glue. That's, that's great. Um, so after that, we'll go for um, some distortion. Uh, what comes with logic that's distortion and good not much just kind of overdrive which isn't really what we want um because none of these have like wet and dry is the problem um mm. exciter no that's not really it Yeah, there's not really much I can offer you in terms of like what I would have as my drum bus tape saturation. So we'll just use Logic Overdrive. Um, here it is without. And with. I mean, it's doing something, you know, it's getting it in the right kind of area, but. You know, you can hear those hi-hats squelching. You can hear those, yeah, that other stuff. Fat FX, you guys think might have a better option. Let's check that out. Fat FX. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never use this. Yeah, cool, cool. Turn off bandpass. Turn off the... Com oh, yeah, there's some compressors in here. They all look like they're the same as the other Logic one, to be honest. So that's all good. Bass enhancer. Yeah, some cool stuff on here. Distortion. Oh, yeah, and you've got the mix knob. Great, great, great. No limiting. Is that everything off? Yeah, I want this off as well. Oh, okay, cool. You've got different types of distortion. Nice, nice. Yes, yes. Soft saturation. That's cool. Soft saturation. Yeah, some tube. That's probably, or maybe an exciter. Let's see how that sounds. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's really good. So what I like to do is really kind of, you know, smash these and then use the mix knob to sort of give it a parallel effect. Uh, parallel compression is, well, sorry, pa using a parallel effects loop basically means that you can run your effects really hard and then blend that signal in with what was there originally. So look, zero percent would be fully dry, and a hundred be fully wet. So look, if I crank this, it sounds crazy. But if I fade it in, you get the best of both worlds because you know you've got all your distortion harmonics going crazy, but you're only using thirty percent of them. You know, or you can do a hundred percent and just. Hey, how's it going, James Paul? Or you can uh, just, you know, run this a little little softer. So I think for ease, I'm going to go with softer full mix, but you guys can play with that. Um, sounds good to me. Whoa, the tube one is mad. 
Yeah, we don't need any of that. Maybe 1%. And yeah, that sounds horrible as well. Anyway, that sounds good. Uh, we've got a nice alternative there to tape saturation. Good shout, guys. How's it going, James Pull? 43 of you. I'm just making a logic template for, for our followers and subscribers to, uh, to use for free. So if you guys are music producers, um, get subscribed and I'm going to give this away for free at the end of the stream. You, uh, you can have the same sort of workflow as me. Cool. So we're compressing there. We're then going into saturation, which is nice. I mean, then we're getting into an area where, you know, I'm using real third party stuff after that. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to add anything else to my drum bus. You guys have seen my drum bus like a million times. So you know what's there. It's like more saturation, soothe, um, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know, maybe uh, I'll put the EQ on there. Um, maybe we put a nice, nicer EQ actually. Might be more fun. We, we do like the the Logic Vintage. You've got graphic, you've got what's console, console EQ, or you've got tube EQ. Oh yeah, pull tech on drums is banging. So I don't know, maybe we can play with that. Yeah, we're distorting a lot, it's the only thing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, you know, it's adding something, um, but yeah, it, it, it just gives you the, you know, the idea of what I'm going for. It's weird having a pull tech that moves fluidly like this as well. That doesn't go like click, click, click. <laughs> Not used to that. Yeah, there's some EQ. And then um, I would put a limiter on the end of my drum bus. Um, so for that, we will use Money. Logic's got an adaptive limiter and it's got just limiter. I don't really know the difference. Um, so I think we'll just go with precision limiter, true peak on. Um, quite, we want quite a fast release for drums, like maybe 100 milliseconds. Um, oh, it's got a look ahead. That's nice. We can put that on like two milliseconds maybe. And then, yeah, we've got to match our output to our gain. Um, that's the, the key. So I like my drums to sort of come out at minus eight. So let's do that. Nice. Okay, that's a good gain structure. So we've got the limiter set just just right. And the key is what I mean by good gain structure is that the volume shouldn't be jumping around when you bypass plugins. They should only be adding the effect you want. For instance, you know, look, if I take all the effects off, we're peaking around minus five, minus six, but but you know, just listen, close your eyes and listen. I'm like they're off. And now on. The perceived loudness is way, way up, but we're peaking at minus eight. So that's the difference. Look, peaking at minus six, sounding like quieter. And now peaking at minus eight, sounding louder. 
So there you go. That should be helpful for you guys. Oh shit, my Mac is dying here. <laughs> I didn't charge it again. Fuck. Okay. Um, that's drums taken care of. Um, why, you ask? Um, so that you can really hear what the effects are doing. You know, you don't want to put an effect on and then it go like bang. Because if you're, if you're adding distortion, you want to hear the distortion. You don't want to hear the volume increase. That's what's helpful. You know, when I bypass this on and off, I want to hear just the, the effect, not the volume increase. See? There is still a slight volume increase with that. So I would back that down. Now there's none. See, now I'm just hearing what I'm adding. That's a good gain structure. Tube EQ. Again, it is raising a tiny bit. Back that down. You don't have to worry about any of this next time you turn on your computer. Yeah, reduction, couple dB on the clap. Yeah, I mean, look, it sounds slamming. It's like absolutely thumping, which is, you know, we don't need it to be this slamming. You can choose different samples. But yes, I always limit the drum bus, but lightly. You don't need to be smashing it, you know. What are we doing here? Minus two decibels. That's, that's fine, because when that clap and the kick drum meet, you know, you're getting a huge spike. So it's just ducking that out. It's not hitting every single kick drum. Limiter with latency, don't disturb you to record stuff. All you need to do, sir, is press this and that will disappear. Press this while you record and it deactivates all of these look ahead moments and it, it brings it all back to normal. But if I, I'm pressing keys now and there is no latency at all. Now there is a tiny bit. But barely any, you know, it's fine. Logic's pretty good with latency when you're not working it super hard. There you go. There's your drum bus done. Step one complete. We got our side chain set up. We got our drum bus set up. We are rolling. Um, damn, I wish I'd charge my Mac more. I mean, it is charging a bit, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Um, up next, bass. To be honest, the rest won't take as long. That was the longest part is the drum bus. Um, yeah, up next, new track, software instrument, um, good old ESP, my favorite. Um, bus 11, so we're making new bus. Here it is. Um, create track stack, which is the same as a group in Ableton. And there we have it, bass bus. And we'll go for a nice, I like my bass to be purple. I just feel like that's the lower end of the color frequency spectrum. So it's purple ESP bass. And I'm going to make this sound like a Moog bass, basically. Um, wow, that's huge. Why is it so big? Oh, that's too small. Yeah, let's, let's have it how it was. Um, this is like a Juno. It's a mini Juno. It's fucking loud, isn't it? It's nice and um, um, velocity sensitive too, which is cool. You can... You know, I'm not really like, you can play that really, it's quite, It's just really intuitive to play the ES, ESP. So you've got the velocity controlling the cutoff, which is cool. Um, so yeah, let's just have that set up as a. So I'll put that in as a guide. Oh, some click would be good. Cool, second half was from whatever. <laughs>
Cool. So there's your ESP base set up. Super easy. You got some controls here. It's just doing a sawtooth. Uh, sorry, a square wave. Just doing one note. Um, so for the drum bus, in terms of uh, sorry, bass bus, we need to obviously send that to all instruments. And I like my bass to peak around minus ten, something right like between minus eight and minus ten. So we're getting that directly out of the instrument because I've backed it off, which is nice and easy. And on this, I would put um, first up some distortion. So let's use that fat effects thing like we did last time. cool um actually no first i would compress my bad i get a compressor give it some punch uh yeah i'd probably use a dvx 160 just adding lots of front end knock on that you hear it without kind of soft and whatever that's got attitude. And then you can wet and dry that effect here as well. So I'd have it about there. Then you got your distortion. Yeah, it's not the best bass sound in the world, but you know, it's, uh, it's going to work for now. Let's put that through a nice Neve EQ as well. A little bass boost. hearing that. Oh, it's because it's bypassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you guys can play around with that. Yeah, there's your little Neve, fake Neve EQ on your bass, which is nice. And then we want to turn that down. So yeah, before, after. Great. Um, and then on the bus itself, you know, you can get your chorus send ready in case you want to send it to chorus. Now you've got like basically a Juno. So, you know, you could just leave that there bypassed. So when you open up your project, it's ready just in case you need it. Same with this one, you know, whatever you decide to put on that. Roto cab. And that way, you know, you can just audition stuff really quickly without, with. Nice. So we'll leave that. And then um, for me, I would always have a sidechain compressor on the bass bus ready to go. Again, bypassed, but, it, you know, it's just there if you need it. And then if we want to, we've got it. Easy. There's your bass bus. Feel free to add whatever plugins you desire on that. Um, yeah, that's just one easy go to bass. You, oh, yeah, reverb as well if you wanted to. If you've got your reverb set up there, just have it ready, man. Just have it all there when you open up. Don't have to do any of this, you know, when you've got someone in the room and you want to just get on with it. Any other questions so far? No, none of this will affect CPU too heavily, to be honest. Uh, I've got a lot of cores here, which is, you know, helping a lot. But you should be able to run this template on, you know, two cores, I'm hoping. Um, because it's all logic stock stuff, and that uses the, the least amount of uh, CPU. 
Uh, why no headphones? Because I got my speakers and I use Adam A7X at the moment. I'm in LA at the moment, so this isn't my go-to setup. Should you call out mono bass? What do you mean? Like do mono bass? I mean, the bass is pretty damn mono here at the moment. If you're in any doubt, um, you know, get your stereo imager out and have a look. That's <laughs> pretty damn down the middle. Um, oh, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, if I was to widen it. Ah, oh, it's not even doing it. I think there's literally just nothing to widen. Yeah, there you go. Crazy. Yeah, you don't, you don't need any of that. You want to mono your bass. So yeah, look, if you're worried that your bass isn't mono, you can put this on there and that will mono everything. Yeah, there, it's just mono. There is nothing not mono about that bass, so you're not really hearing it. But um, yeah, look, have that on there. I'll leave it for you bypassed but that will mono everything before it goes to the master out um if you so please obviously chorus and stuff is going to make it stereo but remember we already put these on those channels so you don't have to worry you are sorted yes my real template is with battery i'm not doing that today because i'm giving this one away to you guys so um yeah not everyone has battery <laughs> Is there an optimal reduction for limiting? Yeah, it, it depends, man. I, on my drum bus, I like to keep it between 2 and 3 dB, nothing heavy, because I like to keep things kind of open, and give it some dynamic range. But, you know, if you're like Knife Party or Skrillex or someone, fucking smash the limiter as hard as you can. <laughs> um, whatever, you know. Limiters have a vibe about them too. They have their own sound. So, you, you know, some people like that. Uh, to get this template, I will upload it to the Discord after the stream. Subscribers only. This is a kind of treat for my subscribers. We got to a thousand the other day. So yeah, this is the, the little treat for you guys. Uh, I don't have a feedback email. No, but I do have a discord. So go check the discord guys. There are like lots of places to send us music there. And the communities is like 5,000 people in now. So um, yeah, lots of people listening to each other's music in there. And we do weekly competitions too, where I make a beat, you guys finish it at the weekend. And then I listen to the top 10. So yeah, get involved, man. Got a nice little community here. Yeah, Knife Party goes 30 dB reduction, probably. <laughs> yeah, come along for the ride, guys. Um, cool. What else do we want on our, on our base bus? Um, some probably, yeah, that old, that's, that distortion thing that we've made might, might be cool. You never want, know if you might want more. Um, where's base bus here? but have it bypassed, you know, a compressor as well. Just have it all on there, ready to go. Same with the sidechain, you know, when you're writing, you don't want any of that stuff on, but it's there, it's ready. It's going to save you time. It's going to keep the flow going, you know, that's what you're looking for. Thanks for subscribing, Husey47. Welcome, welcome. Okay, next up, pad bus. Um, what synth should we use for pad bus? Let's do a vocoder synth. I feel like you guys are probably really wanting that disclosure sine wave synth sound. So I can arrange that for you. Um, let's go with what picture do we want here? Whatever that is. Disclosure signs <laughs> wavy. Okay. Um, we want to send that to bus 12, make a group. Pads, bus. Welcome, Gaz the Taz. What's up? Um, okay, for our pad bus, uh, we'll go... What color do I have pads? I don't even remember. Green? Money. Let's go green. That's a kind of gross green. I don't like it. Yeah, that's a good green. Pad bus. Um, let's do this as well. Drums. Drum bus. Bass bus. Pad bus. Uh, sweet. All right, disclosure signs. I'll just make this quickly for you guys if I haven't already got a preset. I don't even have a preset for disclosure signs. Uh, it's not letting me play. Oh, yeah, because we're on that.
So there's built-in chorus on this if you want it. But I like to turn it off and keep it mono until it gets to my chorus. So add some vibrato. Oh, it's got some. Yeah, I mean, adjust as you accordingly. Let's go with that. Got different waveforms here. Let's keep on a triangle wave. Uh, that is fine. That's that's it. You got your attack and release. Let's keep it that for now. There's your sine waves. Very nice. Uh, someone said, is there an alternative to this plugin? Yeah, I mean, just it's just literally doing a, a sine wave. Hey, thanks, LabWest. Nice one. I'm going to buy myself lunch with that. Um, yeah, you can just, you know, this is literally just doing sine waves, guys. Nothing fancy. Um, why is that like? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's give it some bass notes as well. Nice. On that, going to send to chorus. This is, you know, you're immediately in the disclosure land now. <laughs> there it is. Make sure the, the uh, pad bus is going to uh, the instrument out bus. See it turning up here. Oh, yeah, we need to make sure these are going to that as well. Forget about that sometimes. Our effects bus also need to go there, bus 20. Now we hear nothing. Yeah. Nice. Um, same sort of thing. You know, let's put an EQ on that, which we will bypass. Uh, you know, a compressor. Bypass, just so it's there. Um, and then on... So here's another thing I like to do. Now you can decide, do I want to sidechain directly on this synth? Do I want to, you know, pump just this synth? And then, you know, say you've got five other synths that don't you don't want pumping. Well, you don't want to put the side chain on the bus because then, you know, anything going through that bus is going to get is going to get pumped. Um, sorry if you don't know what side chain means. This this like lecture, I guess, might be a little out of your um, knowledge at this point. But yeah, sorry, I, I don't really have time to keep explaining. Um, but yes, yeah, so for those who know, I'm going to put a side chain directly on this synth itself. Uh, maybe I'll do a little delay as well, a little stereo delay. Uh, Money. That's tasteful and uh, let's, I don't know, a little reverb as well. A nice reverb that I used to use all the time for uh, Settle was, um, um, it was called Gymnasium. Yeah, there it is. That's a good one. Oh, shite. Uh, yeah, I like this reverb. It's got nice. Yeah, it's got a nice vibe to it. Bit digi, but... Anyway, there's your go-to kind of disclosure sine wave vibe. And now we can sidechain. So Bye. let's do that. Bus one, sidechain. Pull up our sidechain preset, which you guys will all actually have with this template. That's dope. Rocket.
yeah, super cheesy, but you know, I'm just trying to do the demo. <laughs> um, oh, is that not velocity sensitive? Should be. Ah, strange. I thought this was, uh, it was velocity sensitive. Anyway, other sine waves are available. <laughs> Cool. So now we're getting to a point where you can really see like why I enjoy working this way. Drums. I know where they are on the drum bus. Bass. I know where it is on the bass bus. Pads. I know where they are. Pad bus. And I can just bypass any of those whenever I want. And then uh, all go into this one bus here at the end, which you guys can't see now because it's behind me, um, which is really annoying. Um, but this this one here behind my screen, bus 20, that is all instruments. You know, if I mute that, you're not going to hear anything. Gone. Back. So there you go. Um, for the reverb, why don't you use they in sends is it better choose a reverber oh god for a different synth instead of the same one in all sends so i like to have a reverb send as like emergency reverb in case it's just like i quickly need to pull one up and then if i want you know a more specific reverb put one on the track do whatever you want man you can use three reverbs at the same time if you want it doesn't matter if you say you want like a clap to sound like it's in a room put a room reverb on it and then send it to a big one it's, there are no rules um, you know, it's up to you. Um, if you have FabFuel Fab Q Pro Echo Boy plans, would you suggest replacing some of the stock plugins? Yeah, that's exactly the vibe, Lab West. So I'm just doing this so that the template works for everyone. Logic stock plugins, change whatever you want. Like just, yeah, like I've, like I've done here, you know, you've got channel EQ bypassed. That's basically just to show you, put an EQ there. <laughs> you know, but choose your choose whatever one you want. I use Pro Q, absolutely. Like I wouldn't really choose this compressor either for a, for a sine wave pad. You know, I might use uh, my eleven seventy six waves. But just in case people don't have them, you know, I'm going to keep it Logic only. Uh, you could send that as well to the Roto Cab. That would sound cool. Oh, that's double chorus. <laughs> You know, whatever you're feeling. Sweet. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, let's load up a couple more synths in there just so you, you get the get the idea. Um, you know, let's have like a Juno type thing. See, drag it in, then it's in the bus. See, Juno vibe. I'm surprised I don't have a Juno. <laughs> uh, let's pretend that that's a Juno. <laughs> Whoa. See, this is the stuff you just don't want to have to mess around with when you get going. You just want it to work. Cool, putting those stabs. So 
So those, you know, slightly more stabby, stabby vibe this time. So let's, uh, let's roll with that. Oh no, wait, we're going the wrong way. Ah. <laughs> uh, let's loop that. Just hear those. So this is more stabby. So, you know, you might want to compress it a little harder. I think I'd use this one for that. All these compressors have different sounds, so you know it's just up to you. It's your taste. Nice EQ. Don't really need it, but maybe a bass rumble. Bring out some of those because this is, you know, kind of stabby thing. Just little little moves here and there. Little delay. Uh, let's go for echo this time. Oh, cool. kind of cool very short reverb this time maybe as well are we doing battery we probably nearly dead now eight percent yeah very bad nearly done here though guys so i might take a break and then uh we'll come back and do holding on in like an hour or something or half an hour yeah i'll finish the template go offline for like half an hour and then i'll come back and do the breakdown once we've got a bit of battery um let's do small wooden chambers a good one If you're in headphones now, you'll be really able to hear that stereo. Kind of cool. Chorus. Sounds like a Juno to me. I'm going to side chain that as well. Last thing to make is a vocal bus, just in case you want to lay down some scratch vocals. I'm going to select no input on this because you guys might have you know a different interface or whatever to me, so that's important. Um, so we'll I'll leave bus 13 and 14 free um, for like maybe you want to add samples or I don't know some other some other buses for grouping things together. So I don't know. In fact, I'll leave you a bunch. So let's do bus 18 will be like scratch vocal bus, scratch vox. Scratch is just, you know, demo vox. So you just plug in a mic and start singing or whatever. But you could do whatever. You could do a guitar. You could do a synth, whatever. It's just I want to get a way of feeding audio in for you guys. Um, create track stack. Scratch. Oh. Scratch butts. <laughs> God, I can't type today. Uh, the bus will be, what color should we do a vocal bus? Pink. Maybe not pink. Maybe red or orange, whatever that is. Yeah, that's good. Um, you want vocals. Boom, there you go. So, um, yeah, so what you would do here, you can see this, right? Yes, make sure that. Right now we need to route this correctly too. So like I said to you before, all the instruments, all the instrument buses are going to bus 20. This bus, vocal buses are going to go to bus 21. Here it is. And I'm going to name that. Uh, you see it here on the side? It's better, isn't it? All Vox. And that will be green as well. Oh no, not you. You will be green. I think I have to do that on the mixer. Sweet. 
so annoying. I'm I'm like in the way on the Twitch screen. I know you can't see over here. Maybe if I make these smaller, can you? Does it appear? No. <laughs> All right, sorry. Well, you can see it on the side here. All Vox. Vox bus is going to here. And then that is going to go to the master out, which is fine. So I'll just record some just bullshit in. I don't know what. Um, oh, yeah, we need to select an input. One, two. Put latency on. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just whatever. I'm not going to give that to you guys, but I'm just doing this as a demo. Um, there, 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 there. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Okay, and the point of doing that is now you should be able to see. Um, uh, oh, yeah, wait, if I open the mixer window, then you can see my mixer. Here we are. There we go. All right, sweet. So now all instruments and all vocals. Uh. Yeah. And now that's given me the flexibility to, you know, adjust my vocals, adjust my instruments just before it hits the master out, which is super useful. Uh. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm not going to keep that, but <laughs> yeah, you guys get the, get the idea. Let's make sure that's not even in the project. Now it's gone. Yeah, cool. Um, sweet. So yeah, you might have scratch bus there, scratch vox. Um, and so you can choose your own input on that. Um, I would say you would want a compressor for sure when you're tracking vocals. Um, I can't really set the gain for this annoyingly. So you'll just have to figure that out, but I'll put them on there. So, you know, like the order of what I would do. Um, actually yeah, I might, I'd probably go for the vintage EQ. Have that on there. And then I don't know, whatever, whatever you want, like compression and EQ is the first main thing. And then, you know, you got, you shouldn't need a gain plugin cow salsa you should just be recording at the right volume on the way in because you know if you're distorting like loads on the way in and then turning that down with gain you're just turning down distorted signal so just make sure that you're recording in at a reasonable volume minus eight minus six at the most that should sort you out uh, i was recording in way too hot just then so yeah yeah i always compress first and then eq uh, well, not always, but with vocals, yeah, usually. I control the volume first and then EQ that afterwards. Um, oh, a de you might want to use on a vocal. Um, is there a Logic de -esser? Yeah, de 2. There you go. i got no idea how that works. So you guys can figure that out. Um, yeah, that's, that's all good. Um, you might want some... What do you want on the bus? Maybe a side chain you might want on the bus. Put that there. You might want more EQ controls. You might want more compression as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Up to you. They're all bypassed. They're all ready to go. Um, let's just pretend that you're recording a bunch. Scratch BV. left and right might be useful exciter yeah you can do all of that you can rename the buses you can do anything this is going to be yours so you can do whatever you like you could call that worst singer in the world bus that's what i would call it for me uh, or you could call it beyonce bus if you're recording with beyonce that would be great wouldn't it um, so that's, that's all there. Um, I think, is there anything else that I kind of have that you guys would want on this that is achievable, like in logic? Um, cause I think that's a nice, neat place to start. Look at that. All nice and tidy up there. Serato effects bus. Oh yeah. Yeah. The master bus. Yes, yes. You're right. 
But yeah, isn't that nice? You know, you could have like 50 tracks on that and then just minimize them all. I'll leave them out now for you guys to see. And you can turn them all on and off as well. If you want to save CPU, that just bypasses them. And to actually like hard by bar by, uh, bypasses them, it means that the plugins are off. Like they're not using CPU, you know? I mean, this is not using much CPU anyway, but if I bypass everything, see? All that CPU drops away because they're actually off, off, like fully, fully off. So that's useful. Um, top or and or mid bass. I'm not sure what you mean. Cheesy house strings. Yeah, we could add in the strings on the on the on the bus here. Screw it. I just use Logic strings anyway, so that's going to be no different. <laughs> Um, let's, yeah, we'll just do that. Studio strings, that's stereo. You've got the option of multi-output on this one too, which is cool, but. Uh, you need to turn this on as well if you're using this. Extend. I always forget that's there. Yes, uh, where's a better delay? We can steal for that. Stereo delay. Yeah, maybe a slightly bigger reverb for strings. Hall. Uh, I don't know. Vocal hall. chain let's get that in terrible <laughs> See, and I know where all these are, so I can just go for a mute like that and leave the kick going. Give you some idea for like how you want to structure the tune. Banging. Uh, could you do a Rhodes vibe? I, does Logic have a Rhodes? I'm sure it does. Let's try. Probably in the XS24. Which I hate the update because I haven't learned it properly. Um, well, it's called, it's just called Sampler now. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. I just want Factory. Factory. Uh, keyboards, electric pianos, stage mark two. There you go.
There you go, some nice uh, roadsy stuff. It's not what I would use, but you know, it'll do. Compress. delay let's do like a triplet thing that's cool nice bit more effects roto cab and it's already being side chains so that should sound good There you go. Uh, I won't do a poly six because you've kind of got it already with this Juno vibe. You know, this is very similar to a poly six. You got square wave, got everything you need in there to make a kind of, you know, more. That would be it. But I think you're good with how it is. Play with the noise. You know, you could EQ it a bit as well. I've given it some of that. But yeah, that's good enough. I'll call it Julo, Juno slash Poly vibe. Cool. Uh, let's get that looking like a Rhodes. Get it colored. Nice. Uh, effects chain. Do you mean like the bus, My like the output? output uh, master bus. Yeah, we'll do that next. Sweeps, rises, impacts. Not really. I don't really have a go-to for that. I just kind of... Yeah, I, I just kind of... Um, Make that up as I go along. Drag in like white noise and yeah. Vintage electric piano plugin. Oh, is there one? Is that is that a thing? Logic. Vintage electric piano. Ah, oh, much better. How's that sound? Cool. Yeah, if you'd prefer that, fine. <laughs> Sounds good to me. What does it do up here? a bit more raspy yeah nice I don't like the distortion turn that off phase is cool let's do a phaser yeah nice cool with me man that sounds good Nice uh, vintage tube EQ. I mean, there's some on there already. Um, where, where did I put it? On the scratch vocal, you know, it comes with that. But that's totally up to you guys. You need to play with that. I'm not going to decide. There is no go-to EQ for everything. So that's you. Um, save the project. Yeah, I should probably save it. Uh, well, save as, as template, I mean. Um, we'll call it. Disclosure, thousand sub template, give away. Cool. So you'll have like this tune built within as well. So you can have a look around. Um, Ableton Rewire. Um, 
Maybe, maybe I'll add that at another time. You know, I can always keep updating this thing and give it to you guys. I think what's most important now is we do this, uh, this mix bus out. Um, again, there is no go to, this is how it should be, you know, mix bus out setting. Um, I'm just going to kind of, it, it's just for the order. It's just so you guys can see the order of the plugins, you know, that's what we're going for here. Um, so here's my master out and turn it down because we should be coming in at a pretty good level. That bass is really riding it up, which doesn't need to be. Cool. So we're coming in a little hot. So, you know, you could easily just pull these down and then you would have, you know, you've got complete control over your master out. You could whack a gain plugin on there. But for me, the best thing about working like this is you can just select every bus and pull them down. Isn't that great? So, yeah, I think, you know, for the purposes of this demo, minus four is all right, but you probably want to be around like minus six. Um, so yeah, there's your instrument out. And at the moment, those are both going to just straight up stereo out. I'm going to go one further. I'm going to send now all my instruments and all my vocals, which don't exist, but you know, they can. I'm going to send all of those to one more bus before we get to the master out, which will be bus 22. And that will be Master FX. Um, orange. And you can put whatever you want on there. I traditionally put an RC20 on there and I mess around with that. But, you know, wh whatever you want. I think for the sake of this video, I will go with a Remix FX plugin. So now all my instruments, all my vocals, of which there are none, but, you know, they, they can be. Maybe I'll just scratch something back in again so you can hear for the sake of the video oh for god's sake <laughs> there you go nice ooh for you all really nice and sharp um let's tune that <laughs> How is it not? Mono. That's not even a is that even possible. Mono to stereo. Stereo. Cool. So there's me just doing an ooh, so you can see where the routing's going. Um, side chaining that on the bus. We don't actually need to do it on the bus. We can do it here. Send that to a chorus. click in fade mode. Let's... 
Cool. So now you can see on my effects um, mixer thingy on the mixer. Instruments are there. My vocals are here. Got them nicely separated on two faders. So I could easily just, you know, boost the vocals if I wanted to. So there you go. Uh, those are now both going here. Master effects. Mute that, you hear nothing. You know, if you wanted to as well, you could you can bypass sending to that or that. You could send something straight to the master effects. Say I didn't want my reverb, chorus, buses, you know, going to all instruments. Maybe I just want them to go to master effects. Quick fix, you know, you just do that. And now if I bypass that, all you'll hear is the effects. Might be useful, I don't know. I personally usually just send all my effects to the instrument bus. It doesn't make much difference. Cool. Now you've got the ability to mess with your entire tune before it even hits your stereo output. So yeah, look, we're coming in a bit hot there still, because if I'm doing crazy effects, it's, it's going to peak, which is not what you want to see. But yeah, when we're not doing crazy effects, we're at a pretty good level. So I'll leave that there for you, bypassed, but it's there. Mix bus, that's the next key thing. First of all, in a mix bus, I like to do, what do I like to do? Tape saturation which we don't have um so we'll use the same thing we've been using before but yeah please feel free to use like your favorite tape saturation plug in here that's what i usually do first of all um so we will do that is there tape on here no <laughs> great um so we'll do just soft saturation again that's the closest to tape you're gonna get very small amount needed on the master out 20 percent let's say just going to give it some harmonics and some added whammy uh, oh no sorry i do that second i do compression first compression first ssl style can't beat it gluing it all together if you're on ableton you should use the glue compressor whatever it's called the glue compressor thing for that that's a really good spot to use it on your mix bus then you could go into yeah you could use saturn here for some saturation you could use the studer a800 if you're using universal audio if you're using waves you could use whatever they have i don't know this thing you could use the abbey road vinyl which is awesome i don't know if you have it but that's great on the mix bus out um, turn down the noise and crackle a little, but it's epic. You know, a little bit of that goes a long way. Ah, oh, it just brings it all, brings it all to life. That does. Look at that bypass. Yeah, you know, whatever. Mess around with it. Use a DJ deck, I don't know. J37 would be great. You could totally use that. Kramer tape would be great. Decapitator, not so much. That's not really what I'm going for here, but you could use it. Maybe wet and dry. A little bit of Decapitator would be fine. But yeah, you get the idea. Something like the a, a tape of, of saturation plugin just to glue it all together. It's a good thing to do on your master out. Uh, after that, I mean, the, the, the court is wide open. You could do multiband compression. You could do, um, some DSing if you need, I would definitely choose soothe if I was doing this. Um, but you know, not everyone has soothe. Um, you could do some exciter, you know, the, 
you could do some widening. The possibilities are kind of endless. Um, so, you know, you guys will probably all have your own master output effects chain, or maybe you just leave it blank and that's fine too. You know, you don't have to do any of this stuff. Mastering guy does a lot of this for you. I just like to, you know, do some myself, but there's, you know, there's a ton of stuff you could choose. Um, in that department, maybe we try a multi-presser. So that's kind of like doing some multi-band compression. I don't love what it's doing, to be honest, but, you know, this is the kind of thing you want to consider at this stage. You know, just controlling, controlling stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave that on bypass. I wouldn't recommend using that, but it's an idea. Um, what else? You could have a, you could have some metering here if you're not happy with your <laughs> single meter. You could have a, start to have a look at your range analyzer. You know, this is the kind of place where these things go. Uh, am I missing something? Yeah, Soothe. Oh, it's on sale. That's cool. You could use the 738 crew compressor. <laughs> you definitely could. Um, and then you will need a limiter if you're bouncing a demo, but not always. You don't have to limit. You could easily bounce this out at this volume and it would sound a bit quieter than the other stuff you've got on your iPod or whatever, but it's, it's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, you know, add whatever you want here, guys. Tape wideners stereo stuff you know ozone isotope stuff you know that's this is the kind of place oh for god's sake i need to sort this out this is the kind of place where you know it, that, that all happens nice little before and after there of uh if you're wearing headphones you should really be able to hear that open up super nice plug in that i really like their stereo imaging stuff cool um yeah limiter again use your favorite limiter um you got your waves l limiters ozone maximizer i personally always use the you know pro l but it's expensive so you know up to you guys logic comes with dun 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 where would it be adaptive limiter it'll do the job set your output ceiling to at least minus not, uh, minus 0 0.1, but you could do less. You could do 0 0.3 if you want to be super safe. I would turn this on, uh, true peak detection, if you're doing not, not like minus 0 0.1. Uh, and you could have the look ahead on as well. Um, that helps it react faster and, and better to what's you know coming, maybe 40 seconds, 40 milliseconds, sorry. Uh, remove DC offset. I don't really know what that is. I'm not going to lie, but it was on, so I'm going to leave it on. <laughs> um, and now, yeah, you might want to just... Turn your headphones down because I'm going to crank it up. If you're ready, I'm going to do it now. Big difference, right? So yeah, you know, we're only reducing by 2 dB there. So you've got lots of headroom. And I like to leave a lot of headroom before the limiter because, you know, you can bounce your demo out with it on. It's going to sound thumping. And then if you're happy, you literally just have to bypass it and you, you're ready to send a pre-master. Done. You know, look at that coming in. Minus seven. That's perfectly acceptable to send to a mastering engineer.
Lots of headroom. Um, I'm going to crank it back up now. Be careful. Here you go. Yeah, sounds good, man. I think we've got too much distortion on the drums for sure. Um, so I'm going to back the mix off a little bit there. There you have it, guys. I think that'll um, that'll do for now. And we can always update it. Maybe I'll give you more and more updates for the template uh, as and when we get more and more subscribers through the door. Um, little reward system for those who come on board. Um, are the drums too compressed or is it meant to be like that? They're definitely too compressed, 100%. Um, but, you know, I'm doing this as an example to show you guys. So I want you to be able to hear what I'm doing. If I was compressing, you know, my drums normally, well, A, I wouldn't use this thing and I would have the mix way down. Um, but yeah, they're super compressed. And we're also using Ultra Beat, which is, you know, looks like it's from the 90s. I don't use these sounds ever. So, you know, from the get go, we weren't, we weren't using good sounds. Look, this is so compressed. You know, I just wouldn't use a sound like that. But it's cool for the demo. Everything is flowing the way I would have it flowing. So, you know, that's the main thing. Um, I'll just give a little structure here. Mute my side chain, mute my kick. Bang, bang, bang. And now, the part you've all been waiting for. Let me move this. Hell yeah. That went just as I planned. <laughs> that was sick. Um, yeah, shouts to Story on that one. Your big moment. <laughs> it all went to plan. <laughs> need some sound effects for sure. I'm going to make a tune for that. I need to make like a hip hop style thing. But um, yeah, there's your template, guys. This will be available on the Discord um, just when I have a second to upload it. Um, maybe I'll make a new channel called Template or something. And then you guys can throw in some suggestions or whatever. And then maybe when we get to 2000 subs, um, we'll do an update. And we'll, we'll change it and yeah, we can, we can build on it. Um, let me save it, save as template, thousand sub template giveaway. Um, and also you need to know where to put your templates in logic for this to work. Um, so how can I show you that? I think if you go, um, cause when you press on logic, like new from well, let me save this as a project as well, just in case. Um, yeah, when you open Logic, there's an option to like open a blank project or open a, you know, completely fresh template that you've already made. Um, so I need to just make sure that's 
all in order. <clears throat> Uh, where shall I save this? Music. I'll put it in my Twitch folder. Twitch. Um, Twitch template giveaway. I mean, to be honest, I could just give you the project and then you can save it as a template and then that might actually be easier than you working out where your template folder is because basically yeah the, the the problem is when you open say say you want to open logic right and close this that's all saved yeah when you open logic this is what the screen comes up new project or live loops whatever you want to go down to here my templates and look there it is these are my usual templates that i use this is what you want to see appear so you just need to find the right folder within your mac to like make that happen um and the correct folder is here music audio music apps project template that's where you need to drag this file and then it'll appear uh in in your logic template folder so yeah go to your user you know guy music audio music apps project templates that's where you need to put the file that will be on on twitch Sweet. Uh, how am I doing battery wise? Yeah, bad. But it does say it's charging. But I'm concerned that if I open holding on and start doing a breakdown, um, which is the plan, it, we're going to lose um, <laughs> we're going to lose power midway through. So I don't know um, what to do about that. <laughs> I just wish my Mac had charged overnight. I didn't realize it was off. Um. Take a break, charge it up. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a 20 minute break, guys. Um, like go fully offline. And then um, we'll come back and we'll do a breakdown of Holding On featuring Gregory Porter. Um, and yeah, well, that'll be fun. Yeah, I'll get some food. That's what I'm going to do. Get some food and I'll be back in like 20, 30 minutes. And I'll put this on the, I'll do the Discord in the in the meantime. There you go. See you on the Discord. Look for the channel. Subscribers only. Um, yeah. I'll see you on there. See you soon. Or oh, let's just do be right back. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>